or recording on the cloud. Thank you. I almost forgot. <clears throat> You're welcome. Uh, my, these drawings are actually pretty small. So if I put my finger over here, you can see how actually small they are. So it might be a little bit awkward for me. If I were you, I would draw them maybe a little bit larger than I'm than I'm making them. Anyway, there's going to be a height width ratio for that rectangle. So if you get these four points, horizontal, vertical, vertical, horizontal, that'll be the front face of our um, hexagonal prism. And then let's do the top face, the top plane. So we'll come off this point to this point, shoot it off to the side, this point to this point. I'm just estimating the angle. And then you can imagine that if you went back in space, the back plane, it's probably, you know, this is the front plane, you know, this front rectangle. So there's a back rectangle back there. It's just going to be a little bit smaller because of the perspective. So if I just connect it, now I've got six sides. This side comes back, connect that. This side angles back to run a vertical down there. <clears throat> I mean, it's a little sloppy. Hopefully you guys are doing a little bit better. Um, and then the way that they define the planes um, looks like there's straight lines because it's this is a very old book that and these were done on um, like like I think they were engravings actually. So that the the way that they kind of defined each plane was to accumulate lines to have levels of darkness. So the far right plane, I'm starting with like the darkest, the darkest part of the picture. So this start, this side goes dark and you know, and then gradually gets lighter as it moves to the side. Same thing on the far side, it starts dark, but not too dark and it gets lighter. The top plane is like a mid-tone gray and those marks are going side to side. And I guess the front really is the lightest plane. It's not white, you know, but it's got a little bit of tone. So I'm just going to run more verticals, a little bit light gray. I should have started, uh, when I do the next one, I'll start it a little, like the diamond shape, I'll start up a little bit higher. Um, so this is a hexagonal prism, meaning the top has six sides. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, six sides and then it just run, it's like almost like that that shape is just stacked over and over and over again. Um, this next one is, I think, uh, I don't know if it's my favorite. So it's like this one has the rectangular sides. The next one, um, almost imagine that you were putting like a teepee or a tent on top of the first one. So let's just try it. I'm just going to slide it down. Just so I have a little bit more room. Slide this over. Okay. So I'm going to build a triangle, the front face. It's going to be too low. Front face. This is the bottom of my first triangle. That's the middle triangle. And then I'm doing a point for the very top of this TP. And it's three visible sides of the teepee. So I'm just going to connect the front side. So, so far, all we have really is a triangle. Then we're going to angle back in space, just like we did from the side up on the other one, go back in space here. Now we've got two more sides. I'm going to bring those sides up to the middle as well. All right. Um, again, a little sloppy. I'm just drawing on an awkwardly flat surface. Hopefully you all are doing better than that, doing better than me. Um, so I did a, a point at the top. I'm going to run a vertical down, you know, without actually drawing the line. And I'm going to find a point at the bottom. And I'm going to let, you know, all of my triangular sides radiate out from that point. One point. Three points. So you have to basically be able to look and imagine the other side of this um, prism. 
And if there's three sides you can see from the front, there's gonna be three sides in the back. Um, let's try to do the shading. I'm gonna start with the darkest point. So I think the darkest side is gonna be this corner. I like that. And then there's gonna be the same darkness on the one below it. Then the middle lower triangle is in shadow, it looks like. So it's got a little bit of a darkness. It's hard to tell what direction the the very the low the left one is, but it's actually at a diagonal here. <clears throat> so I just want to make sure I address the tone of each plane, um, you know, each side of the triangle. Each triangle needs to have some kind of tone to it, and the direction that you're sketching, um, that you make the lines. Um, ooh, I just had an idea. Now the direction will help just differentiate from one plane to another plane. You could also differentiate the planes by using colors. I just, you know, it doesn't have to be mark making, but this was, like I said, it was, it's in a book, an engraving book, and they wanted it to be uh, an engraving. And not an engraving, but like straight lines. And then also I accidentally took a nap this afternoon and I don't know very well. So if I sound a little, really? it sounds awkward. It's because I'm still a little groggy from my nap. I didn't mean to take a nap. I was listening to a podcast. And I was like, I'll just lay down and rest my bones. And then I fell asleep for like five minutes. <clears throat> okay. All right. I'm going to make a real effort to draw this last one. Well, I feel like I'm, I feel like it's so sloppy. My, the middle one, this is just, this is just unacceptable. Granted, this is just the warm up, but still, I taught a three hour class this morning and I should be pretty warmed up. Um, all right, so this one is kind of like, oh, I didn't even think about it like this. So this one, the third one is like, the first one plus the second one equals the third one. So this one plus this one equals this one, meaning, it's got the rectangular or the, you know, the rectangular planes, the square planes, four sided planes, and it's capped with, um, you know, a triangular peaks. So I love that. Okay. So this is the bottom of the picture. I got to make it in between here. All right. So here we go. I'm going to start a square thinking about points to point. Oh, get better. Okay. There's my rectangle. I'm going to do another side rectangle. And in this case, it really does look like it's a square. You know, I'm saying rectangle, but yeah. it looks like one to one. And this isn't, a, a, I don't think this is a crystal that anybody like copied. I think this is a mathematical understanding. <clears throat> so I've got three sides and the way that the artist did it is that he turned the crystal a little bit so that you see the front face, but you see more of the right side than the left side. So it's called foreshortening. So whenever this, this, this square, is seen at an angle, um, mm. it, tilts, it, just, it just gets smaller. And then we need the triangular cap um, pyramid, the six sided pyramid. You know, they've, they don't really, I don't think I've ever really seen a six sided pyramid. Is that even, is it cease to be a pyramid? Does pyramids have to be three sides or four sides? Because they can be anything. This would be a six sided pyramid. I'm putting a dot at the top get the easy one, which is the front face of that triangle. And then we'll get the foreshortened triangular sides. Oh yes, I'm doing better. <laughs> All right, so I, I assume that there's like a center gravitational line, um, you know, geometric center. So I'm gonna pull that down and then I'm gonna plop that, that dot at the bottom and then basically draw the same thing, but upside down. So we'll get the front face triangle here and then pull this corner to the tip and then we'll pull this corner to the tip. Very, very small plane on the left. Fascinating. Barely, barely give an area on that far left side. Love it. Um, this is the, the illustrator is really strong in the sense that he recognizes that in order for the, you don't want to, color each plane the exact same tone all the way throughout. And that goes for everything. 
there's always transitions. Like if I'm thinking about someone, I'm thinking about a face, like drawing a portrait of a, of a cheekbone. You know, there's a light part and it transitions into a midtone and then it goes under into the shadow. There's always transitions that are happening, whether they're straight planes or curved planes. Um, and you know, this, they, they, this, they illustrate it really nicely on this side plane. So we'll do the, the right side will start dark and then it will gradually get lighter as it extends to the side. Um, the, the two planes that angle down, the triangles angle down, starts dark, and then it gets lighter as it goes to the bottom. Kind of pleasant. The front corner, the, the right side corner goes dark. I run out of pencil. <clears throat> and now, if you look at the TP at the top, um, the lines are kind of directionally varied. So the front triangle has horizontals. The right triangle has these diagonals. The left side has diagonals going the opposite direction. And just so we don't confuse the horizontals of the triangle, both above and below the rectangle, the, the front face of the rectangle, he gives us verticals. Um, I love it because you can do the same thing with a paintbrush. So when you have paint, you know, the direction that you make the paint, whether you paint the brush, you know, going side to side or vertical, um, it has an impact on, um, you know, it almost becomes like a mosaic. And, you know, each one of these planes is an individual piece of mosaic. And when you paint with your, when you paint paintings, you know, every paint stroke is like an individual piece of a mosaic. And then you build out the tiles on whatever it is that you're painting. So in pencils, you're kind of defining the planes. When you're painting, you're filling them in. But um, it's like, it, and, it, and it happens piece by piece. <clears throat> I might shore up some of these edges. <laughs> Whoa, that's cool. I'm gonna show you this one up. I'm gonna show you this next one over here just so you can see the, uh, what it looks like um, without, this is like, these are covered. These are like um, crystals that you can't see through. If you can't see through something, it's called opaque. Um, if you can see through something, it's called transparent. Glass is transparent. Um, wax is semi-transparent. Skin is semi-transparent. Everybody thinks there's like a skin tone. There's not a skin tone. You're looking through layers of skin. you're looking through the top layer of skin down into the blood and into bone and like you know so it's almost your skin is almost like is more waxy and like semi-transparent um and you know like i don't know what else you know metal is like opaque you know solid objects that you can't see through at all painted objects um some paint is transparent though that's why i bring it up you can get um like indian yellow is transparent Ultramarine blue is transparent, meaning you put a thin, you put a brush stroke down and light rays penetrate through it and you can see a little bit of what's below it. Anyway, so this, these are opaque forms. And then these up here um, are examples of transparent forms. And they're actually the same ones, um, which I love, not all of the same ones, but um, 65 and 67 are what we just drew. So this was the first 65 was the first one. And then 67 was the second one. And I don't see the, the earlier one. So this is probably probably should have drawn these first and then shaded in the sides. But um, remember when I was talking about the center axis, um, that's what it, there is in fact, the center axis. So the, the peak at the top um, has a, you know, a, a gravitational center and a structural center that links the top and the bottom. That's lovely. That's very lovely. Um, we had an architect in uh, like a, a retired architect, a professional architect in my morning class. And, you know, I talked about you know, this, these crystals and the geometry associated with, you know, crystals from nature, you know, structures from nature. And I was like, did Pete do architects design um, roofs, you know, like, especially for like big mansions or like, you know, houses that have more elaborate bigger budgets like do they design rooftops from um, crystalline structures and she was like sort of like but they she said that they have 
standards, um, you know, building standards that are, um, so not, you know, that are derived from the golden section. And the golden section is like proportions that happen, that naturally occur in nature, like crystalline structures. So the short answer is yes. I mean, they, they do. They don't necessarily like find a crystal and then build a roof off of it, but the angles and the math and the geometry that is derived from a crystal, they employ um, in a standardized way for um, architecture, which I thought was really interesting. If anybody has an interest in architecture, um, you know, you can, you can study those things. <clears throat> Whoa, Stace, nice job. Oh, thanks. I felt like it was sloppy, but to um, use your word, but it was fun. Yeah, and it was finished. You're moving fast. Um, okay, there was a little. There was a. There was a. Um, I got fascinated by a, a tree that I saw this week, looking through some of the art books. Wow, that is. Weird. Oh my god! So much beautiful stuff. Can I see your? The drawing of your three figures while you're uh, looking toward the tree. Yeah, I'll show it, but I'm I'm not very proud of it. This is me trying to wake up. Would you like to square it? I keep knocking it. Thank you. Welcome. Oh yes. <clears throat> okay. We might, we're definitely gonna do the masterpiece tree, which I think is a Correggio, but we have a request for some nature. And I think, I think we all deserve it. If we have some color pencils, I think maybe who knows? If you want to get some colored pencils, you may. <clears throat> Close this down. Close this down. Whoa, look at that one. Look at that pyramid shape. What's it say? That's a, cool. A sphenoid? There's a four mm -hmm. phase, a four phase solid looking like a tetrahedron, but different from it since the faces are isosceles, not equilateral triangles. Oh my gosh, so it's like a bent, it's like a bent pyramid. Not the bent pyramid, but a bent pyramid. It is described as the half form of a square pyramid shown in figures 41 and 51. All right, if this one is not fun, I don't know how you can ever have fun. <clears throat> oh my gosh, Stacey, this is gonna be so hard. <laughs> I'm just kidding, it's gonna be great. All right, let me move this to the side. So the nice thing about this, the good, the best thing and the worst thing is that it doesn't have, uh, it doesn't have feet, which is like a love hate thing for me. I, I love, I, I like it because you can be lazy because the feet just go right into the grass, but then you don't get to draw the feet. Yeah, but you can make your own feet. I suppose. Schmutz, I got schmutz on my had all right <clears throat> okay so let's talk about this thing and i i have not drawn this but um i am like obsessed with it uh let me see if i can dim the light is that better i get less of a reflection i'll let the, the thing oh that's good that looks that good okay mm -hmm. um all right so what we've got here is an idealized view of the side of the head. So we're going to have to start with the head and we should be excited about it because it's a profile. Um, the profile view 
offers um, you know almost no distortion as far as the um, foreshortening goes. So you know we've got this like triangular beak. You know we got like the mohawk as it goes back. It almost feels like a um, you know like a nautilus shell. You know you see that kind of nautilus shell spiral in there. Um, we also have another spiral down here. So the the um, the face is in profile. We want to basically get um, the facial features relative to each other before we start doing the decoration. When I say decoration, I mean like the different types of feathers and the different types of colors. So I typically put like birds' heads into these ovals, and then you know there's a there's he's got a very flat beak on the bottom. And then, you know, kind of like an S curvy top, but he's got little, like you can put that, you could consider that beak, you know, a triangle, but like, look at what you run a horizontal. The horizontal of the beak is basically on the bottom of the oval. So I'm gonna do that. And then that, and then if you were to turn that oval into four parts, the eye is a little bit above center. I think it's exactly in the center horizontally, but on the vertical, I think it's a little bit higher. Um, so really, if you look at the arc of the shoulders here, the, you know, the, the bird is in profile almost all the way to this arc. Now I know the neck here, you're seeing a little bit of the nape of the neck back here. You're seeing the front of the chest there, but really structurally, they're just color differences. So you have like a gray and you have a maroon. Um, the whole head is in, is in profile. And then this, all these spikes that happen from the cheek all the way down the throat, those are kind of like helping to hide the transition. So, this is this is just like so magnificent um, in terms of the neck into the head and this beautiful transition. It's not, I don't even want to call it a beard because beards are ugly. Well, I guess it's in your eye of the beholder, but I don't think of beards as being particularly, you know, attractive, not like this. I mean, this look, this is like a, it's like a porcupine. It's like a setting sun. Yeah. It's like a wave. It's like a, It's it's got all of these, it's got all of these elements that should not be associated with a beard, other than the fact that it's you know, in the position of coming from you know the bottom of the jaw and leading down the neck. Um, so that's that's where these spikes are going to come, and that's going to be a really, I think, a really interesting mark making extravaganza. Um, so yeah, we're gonna you know it, it, I think it looks like a porcupine. So that means there's so many of those marks. And it's unique to, I, I don't think I've ever seen anything like those feathers on another bird. I mean, maybe somebody has, but. Um, so we got this transition from the Mohawk, which is beautiful. These gray tones that are on the side that flank the eye. Um, and then this is where the big shift happens. So the, the, the whole body is facing away from us. So if he were, he's walking away from the photographer because he's like, what is this guy doing? He's probably close, but he's probably not too close because I'm sure he's got a zoom lens. So the guy's like, the bird has obviously noticed the photographer and is thinking about, you know, taking flight or walking away. So his body is turned away, but his head is turned to the side to see. Um, and then we can break, you know, we can really kind of, we'll, we'll try to break the, um, the bird's body down into its component parts. So yes, it's an oval, but it's an oval seen in perspective. So, you know, the thrust of the body, you want to follow the middle of his back down let's just follow the different types of feathers that run down the middle of the back. And this angle, it's not straight at us. It'd be interesting if it was straight at us, but it's at a subtle angle. So we have a profile view of the head and we have a, this diagonal angle of the middle of the back. And that really is the spine, you know, coming from, you know, the, the cervical, the cervical vertebrae all the way down, the thoracic vertebrae to the cervical vertebrae all the way through the end of the tail. So there's the neck, then the neck bones that are you know twisting up here. But then once it hits that crux of the lower, like the top of the back, it's all straight. We have these. Um, I'm gonna call them the tongue feathers, only because it looks like a big round tongue. You know, it's like blue and brown, brown in the middle, blue on the flanks, but it's like an oval. And then you have these. I'm gonna call them like wing tips. I mean, these wing feathers are like huge curving rectangles, um, one out from this side and then one out to that side. So this round um, orb and then flanked by rectangles, um, two overlapping tips, you know, look at these tip feather tips that are in between those two. And then finally, we'll have this trapezoid um, of the tail feathers. So that's running down the center. So we'll go oval, 
rectangular, almost like scissors. They, they remind me of scissor tips, like the wing. I think they are actually the wing tips. Um, so these broad feathers, wing tips, and then the tail feathers. So those are the major groupings going down the center. As for the side, let's, let's not look at the right because it's cropped a little bit. Let's look at the left. So we have a maroon neck and then two black and white stripes that transition from the neck into the body. Who knows what type of feathers they are, but it's, 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 I think it's really important to understand that there's a transition from the neck into the body through these two, uh, first white, then black, white and black, two white black feathers. Then this whole side, it's like, it reminds me of a, um, you know, if you were to pick, if you were to pick up the bird, you would be, you would hold the bird by the body and you'd like kind of cup your hands around that side. And I'll zoom in on it. It is a like stunningly. Oh my gosh. Elaborate black and white striped um, layering of feathers. I mean, this bird is wow. like something like that. But it's a huge, massive shape, and it's like a shell. It's like the side of the shell. I mean, you know, if the egg, if the body was an egg, you know, this is the smoothest side of the shell that you would see. It's the closest thing to a shell it looks like. All right, so stripe neck, stripe feathers, shell feathers. Um, you get a we get a repeat of the purple. So we've got whatever down feathers are happening beneath the shell and before the um, the 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 I, that, well, they're truly the, um, the tail feathers. So there's tail feathers that are the, the feathers that cover the actual muscle of the tail. And then there's like the long feathers that come out of the tail that are used to, um, you know, to have the bird fly. Come back, come back. And that's what these white down feathers are. They're actually coming out of his butt. Whereas these tail feathers are probably lower back and are actually part for flying and not insulation. I zoom in and <clears throat> I wish this I wish this reflection pole wasn't here. Is there anything I can do about it? There's really not much I can do about it. And then it crops. No. No. I'll just go back. I'll make it so that the oh, I guess that did help a little bit. <clears throat> All right, I want color, so I'm not going to use graphite to start with. I'm going to use I'm going to use the um, should I do pens? What do you guys do using? I know you all started. I was thinking of graphite and then going over in ink. So it's just black and white, but Oh yeah, you're, you're a on, color guy. You're on that tip. You're on, you're on that tip. Okay, so the morning class Think about it. My morning class that Stacy was a part of, we did some pen and ink and it was really kind of nice. I think you should do that actually. Cuz that you you you're you're good at that. Oh, thank you. That fuchsia beak is just amazing. That color. I, I, I love it. Just got to draw the edge of my, my rectangle, my zoom rectangle. <clears throat> I'm usually more decisive than this. Well, it is. I'm just nervous that it's going to take me a long time to do the pen, but I don't care. I have a nice pen. All right, I'm going to do pen and ink like Stacy did, and then maybe I'll come in and color it with color pencils after. <clears throat> okay, so I need to. I'm in a I'm in a weird situation because I need to get the um I need this bird to fit on the page. But it's not that different than what you guys are doing. I'm you know, still going to think about it the right way. So I got this triangle. There's a little cap on the end of his 
little bird, little, little, little duck cap. And then I'm going to do this oval trying, I'm really attempting to like almost see the, um, see beneath you. Have, it's so hard because you have to see beneath the feathers. And the whole point of the feathers is that you don't see beneath them. Um, mm -hmm. It's all, it's all a camouflage thing. And then even when you do see the, see the bird, it's a deception thing. So yeah, there's an eye. Those, that's one thing I know for sure. The front of the neck, I know for sure. And then the back of the head. And then, okay, so then the shoulders are on that side, I think. So I'm going to separate the head, uh, the neck, ex excuse me, the neck from the body. And then I'm going to come down, find this angle that runs down the middle of his back. Oh my gosh, you're like, wow. I mean, head, shoulders, knees and toes. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> it's head, head, neck. So I did an oval, I did the beak so I know that I didn't move it too far to the left. I needed, I think, yeah. the, I think the beak and the body are almost lined up. So I needed, mm -hmm. I started with the beak because I just had to make sure that it fit on the rectangle. So then once I quickly got the triangle of the beak, I acknowledged that the bottom of the beak was flat where it meets the body is at an angle. And then I started my oval from there. The hardest part of the oval is not the top of the forehead. It's really where the feathers start and start hiding the relationship between um, the head and the neck. So then I, what I did is I switched over and I tried to imagine the um, back of the skull. And mm -hmm. then I followed the neck down in an S curve, the spine, from what I know about the spine. <clears throat> and I feel like most people have seen, you know, at the zoo, at, not at the zoo, but at, the, at like the Natural History Museum or something like you can imagine like the spine of a, of a goose, you know, the long curving neck of the goose and the short curving neck of the, the, the duck. I have to admit, I don't know if I told you this, not you guys would not have known, but the Amish market, not only do they sell rotisserie chickens, but they also <laughs> sell duck and they are so good. I've had Peking duck at Chinese restaurants, which I love. This duck blew all of them out of the water. It was so good. I, I ordered it thinking it was a chicken and then they were like, okay, it's $20. I'm like $20. Oh, because like rotisserie chickens are way cheaper than that. And they're like, yeah, it's a duck. I was like, uh, well, I'm not going to have her put it back. And it was like at the end of the day at the market. So I'm like, I'll take it. So I took the duck. I came home, I carved it. And my, I've never heard my dogs whimper so much in their entire life because when they smell something that they like, they whimper more when it smells better. So I know that I cooked a good meal if they whimper harder which is like a sad way to judge your cooking. But this duck, they whimpered so aggressively to get a piece of it. And ducks are pretty fat. Oh my God, look at that. Okay, so I pulled the center line down and then I see, I'm seeing the curving part of this tongue. I don't know why I call it a tongue. It's so also gross, um, but it's convex out here. The whole, the whole tongue is kind of convex, but then it allows itself to transition into a concavity Look, see how that those those wing those rectangular wing tips, they almost remind me of um like a like a blade or like yeah like a like a butcher's blade. It's curving yet it's rectangular, and then the one on the left is on top of the one on the right, so that it starts curving out and then it swoops and then curves in, curves out and then curves in, and then the the wing tips are in reverse order. So this is the next, um, it's got flat and then it's also knife blade like. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that I'm not drawing the individual ones. I'm just drawing them collectively as one blade, but you can tell that they are subsets of the same form. I shouldn't, I, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm trying not to get ahead of myself, but it's just so gorgeous. All right. So this curve comes in front this is the top one, then this, and then I guess maybe the next one would be this next knife blade. And then that is, comes in front of the rectangular blade. And then finally, 
the underside of the next knife blade. Let's pull the trapezoid of the tail feathers down. Hmm. I'm gonna move my bird up a little bit. I made him a little taller. That's too tall. Never too tall. Okay, so it's trapezoidal in the sense that it's wider as it enters the body and it gets starts to get narrower, um, but then it cuts in to, um, to a point and then we'll have a series of those feathers there. Okay, so at least this is the low, we've gone from head to toe and it's not technically head to toe, but it's from top to very bottom, the extreme top to the extreme bottom. And we've gone, I've attempted to go through the middle. So the only way to go through the middle of the um, of a profile is to follow the top edge. You know, so in a bilaterally symmetrical bird, you know, the profile of the top is the middle. And then as it turns, it S curves into here and it's a 90 degree shift. 90 degree or 45 degree? 90 degree shift. So profile to almost, almost 90 degrees. Okay, great. Maroon. Now I'm, I, now I'm in kind of in a unique position where I can put the, those fancy spike feathers. I can see those as a, an orb. And then I can, now I can add the, the detail feathers to the body. So I got this striped black and white on that side. I really wish I saw them on the other side. I'm gonna put them in on the other sides ever so slightly, especially if I start to color it, but I, I probably won't, we'll do black and white, we'll see. Okay, um, and then we're gonna do what I'm calling the shell feathers, which are you know, these down wings that give us the roundness, the beautiful roundness of the body of the, the duck. It's and almost that, as if that is an egg within the dock. Yeah. That beautiful shape. Yeah, that's what's so that's why I find also so strange about birds is that I mean many of the forms of their head and their body you know, resemble eggs in proportion. And then they also lay mm -hmm. eggs. So it's I mean you would yeah. it, it makes sense, but I also don't know what like the scientific explanation for it is. Like if you were gonna lay an egg and you're would you <laughs> If you're, wouldn't your body be the shape of an egg if you're going to lay an egg? I don't know. But I mean, then snakes lay eggs and they don't, they're not, I don't know. And there may not be any correlation whatsoever. It's just could be coincidental, but it seems too. It's interesting. It's too bizarre to be coincidental. <clears throat> so what's on the right, do on the left, what's on the right, um, look for it on the left and sketch that. Um, the shell I made larger on the left. So I'm actually going to make my shell portion larger on the right. So he's going to be a more well-fed um, duck. And I'm not going to apologize for it because I want symmetry. Um, and I don't want, I'd, I'd rather him be fuller than not as full. In theory, I should have probably carved that side down, but it's okay. I got the, I got real estate for it. <clears throat> um, that's interesting too. Okay. So we're going to, I'm going to, you know, subdivide the different sections of feathers, uh, groupings of feathers on the body. And then within those groupings, there's subdivisions as well. So I'm, I'm just going to finish these. There's a, this next purple section below the shell. And then there's the white tail feathers beneath that. And then I think I need to make my um, flight tail feathers longer. So right side, shell feathers little passage, <clears throat> little teeny passage of purple and then white. Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm feeling ex good about it. Um, I may erase, let's just, let's just, I will erase the construction lines as we go. So we're gonna put in a nostril hole. I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna revisit everything that we've got. Um, with a little bit more detail. So I'm going to refine, I'm going to refine my pencil marks. 
to set myself up for the pen marks. And that's a very common method when you're drawing something, you kind of loosely sketch it, construction lines, sloppy, someone else looks at it, they're like, uh, I kind of know what it is. Um, you know, they may not, it's all marks for you, basically so that you can, you know, you know you're refining all the things, um, having it, knowing that it fits on the paper or the canvas, um, you know, having in your mind addressed all the component parts. So at least you can think to yourself, all right, now I know what I have to do. Um, so here, now we know all the parts that we, that are necessary to, 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 to define, and now we can go and define it. So here we go. We're in the definition phase. <clears throat> and I also heard a, uh, I heard a, a saying where they say perfect practice makes perfect instead of practice makes perfect. And I don't know if that's universally true and I'm not, you don't want, I don't want you to overthink the meaning of it, but the more accurate you are, the more exactly accurate you are with the pencil, the easier it is to do with the pen or the easier it is to paint over. So, yeah. um, so you almost want to try to make it perfect you know, in the pencil, because then the pen will be that much more perfect. You know, there'd be less corrections and that's all within reason. All right, so the beak itself, I'm gonna start where it attaches to the head. There's that angle, it curls under, a little, little Scrooge McDuck kind of look to it. A little, um, almost like a little teardrop hanging off. And then the, where the, the top of the beak meets the body, there's kind of a flat plane, I love that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so there we go. Okay, good. Nostril hole. Um, that flat plane of the beak is kind of the um, where the blue stripe is born. So we're going to do this blue stripe up the mohawk. And so I had a singular line for the top of the head. Now have a line that defines the, the blue stripe. I'm going to end that and then watch how the blue transitions into, it almost looks like he's wearing like a backwards hat or something, but it transitions into a beautiful uh, golden brown uh, top of the head. And it looks like it finishes off with a blue tip. Who knows? So now this is where my construction lines really need to get gone. Um, I, I feel like I have got the head in the right place, but I need to know where to put my colors. I need to know where to put my pen. So I'm going to pull the, the curve of the throat and then place this eye tear duct. The shape of the upper eyelid touching the eyeball shape of the lower eyelid touching the eyeball. There's a little highlight inside of there with a the reflection. And I'm nervous about filling that in too much, but <clears throat> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do it. I put it a light pencil. Um, the ink of the pen will cover up over light pencil tones. Um, if you put too much pencil down, it'll cover the fibers so completely that the pen won't have a chance to soak in. My gel pen does, is not particularly compatible with graphite, but my ink pens are. Um, there is a white border around the, um, the black eye. And it's you know, probably one of the lightest parts of the, obviously there's some light feather tips, um, but on the face, this is the, the feathers that flank the blue are pretty white and then I think the white of the face around the eye stands out so much because the eye is so dark. So that really is the area of highest contrast, the white and the black around the eye. Wow, great. And that little, that little patch seems like it continues down um, right up against the backwards hat that we just completed. And that backward, then that white patch is flanked by a blue patch. Hangs down a little bit lower. Whoa, nice. 
Um, I'm going for easy answers, which the next easy answer for me is the shape of the reddish um, in the red into the red violet, you know, the red into the purple. That's just like an S curve, which is the silhouette of the front of the neck. Now, I, I, I'm excited to solve the porcupine feathers, but I'm also a little scared. So I'm gonna kind of set the stage, erase some of my construction lines and I can see that they're kind of starting small around the face and around the bottom of the skull. There's some mid-level triangles. So the feathers seem to get longer the further away they get from the face. So I'm gonna stick with that theme. All right, so there's a little bit longer. I'm gonna do some longer still. See how they're kind of like, they're almost like fanning mm -hmm. out. Fan, 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 fan. <clears throat> and, if, and again, if you guys have another mark making technique that is like more successful, I mean, you can you use it um, first of all, but also if you wanna share it, you can do that too. So I'm gonna make this next row even longer. And there's just a lot of them. I feel like almost like tiles to me. And then there's this last layer which will be most long. And I'm just sticking with our theme of, you know, of triangles. Now the, 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 there's also color variation. They start orange on the face feathers and then they get the, the white, they get light white tipped. And then at the bottom, they're orange, orangey. And you can almost, you can tell that they're feathers and not like cartilage because the tips of them where they run up against the, um, the feathers on the back, they bend a little bit. I like that. I like mm -hmm. the, even like indicating the little, those little, those little suggestions go a long way. Even though there's like might be 30 bent ones, if you draw three, the viewer will pick, will pick up on it. <clears throat> um, and the, the, the feathers are darkest where they're closest to the body. So they're like, like you know, they, they, they're, they're kind of spread out. You know, they're, they're, the feathers are spread. I'm trying to think of something else that does that. Like maybe, a, maybe sort of like a puffer fish. You know, this is almost like a puffer fish that isn't puffed up. And if the puffer fish were to blow up even more, they'd be even more separated and more spiky. And they probably could be flattened out even even more yeah they could they might even be unified and they might even like not even look spiky you know in certain and when the duck is in a particular state something tells me this could get even puffier if they wanted to just like the <clears throat> puffer fish but i don't know that it would, seems like it would be a waste they couldn't they couldn't make a statement um, the last part, I, I, I'm acknowledging that, that my, there's this little gray passage that's in the back is the background of some of the orange ones. So the, the front of the neck is purple, the back of the neck is gray. I don't know why that is though. Because maybe, does that mean there's gray underneath this orange here? Like if you were to turn his head all the way to the other side revealing the purple on the other side, would you get some gray notes over there? I'm not sure. It's okay. <laughs> We've got a nice, um, looks like it's a nice kind of beginnings of a coloring book, <clears throat> coloring book page. Okay, so these feathers always, always start from the center and move out. And I'm looking at the back feathers. There's these really dark brown feathers that you know kind of are, are like the ones that we just did on the right. And they overlap. Oh God, I hate getting text in the middle of class because I think I left somebody out in the cold, but that's not the case. <clears throat> these are gonna be brown feathers in my mind. And then they're flanked by these really stunningly beautiful purple feathers and they turn the the blue almost turns into black
And in in the drawing phase, it doesn't look like much, but look at the, uh, the I can't tell if this is, is this shadow underneath there? I think that's shadow here and here. I think that's a black feather. Or I think it's, it's uh, well, it, I don't know. Is, is it a black feather casting a shadow? <laughs> so interesting. I like that there is a little uh, a contrast edging, you know, dip, you know, separating. All right. So these the the nice thing about the larger rectangular feathers, they do have subdivisions. So there is a you know a black and blue border. And then this side has a black feather and then a blue feather that borders it. But you know, overall, it's kind of a it's, it's a kind of a large area that might be easy to paint. Hmm. Let me ask you this. Now that we're looking at the arrangement of these feathers, do you think that most often the this part this the we did that we did the one on the left this large brown feather on the left the feather on the right do you think that normally comes on top of the scissor i think that it probably does i think that these two feather the the wing tips the, the scissor tips those are probably underneath the big one so watch this i think this is going to look more natural so there's the big brown now we're going to do the small brown and then i'm going to pull the black tips out this way and then the second black tips out this way I think that looks better. I probably shouldn't have colored it in, but I got insecure. <clears throat> whenever, whenever I'm in uncertain, I always lay down heavy lines. It's just one of my, it's like one of my, just one of this, what I've always done that. Um, I can put the, I'm gonna go back. There's like these little squiggy, squiggly lines on the side of the shell. I, th I think I'm gonna be able to manage that really nicely with pen, but in the short term, I can at least put in this mark, which is a symbol for the squiggles. So at least I can get some symmetry and I can feel like it's addressed. Mm And like the um, like the 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 the, uh, the tongue feathers, I keep calling them, like those tongue feathers. I see a, a real connection between those feathers and the tail feathers. Yeah. Um, in terms of Me color too. and the color and the layering. Mm -hmm. so if we start with the tip, and then those are overlapped by these, overlapped by these, overlapped by these, overlapped by these. This one's overlapped by this one, it's overlapped by this one. Nice. So there's my code. This is dark. P. I can put a P down here for purple. You get a P. There's a little purple on that side, I suppose. All right. At this stage of the game, um, <sighs> the the background we can we might be able to do some, but it's very, it's gonna be limited. I mean, we've got grass. Um, I 
And then we've got like the, like, I don't know if there's a stream back here. Then we got like some distant grass. I'm just trying to show that it, something is there. There's an opportunity for us there. Um, I see, I see the grass that's close to us. I see grass that's furthest away. Then I see like a, like a gap, like, like I'm just calling it a stream. Then I see grass on the other side of the stream. And then I think that stream is up against a wall. Um, let please everybody don't underestimate the importance of these backgrounds, um, putting it into context. So just let me, if you go up the tall, the whole right side of the picture, I'm just gonna mark, I'm just gonna mark off the divisions. There's grass that's this whole one third of it. Mm -hmm. Grass, G-R-A-S-S. -S -S. And those are grass by the feet. So I'll put grass, feet, feet. Um, then there's, um, there's the grass that's out of focus that goes from um, you know, the, his body to the edge of the stream. Mm -hmm. So I'll do grass number two, G-R-A-S-S, -S, grass two. Then I'll do the next narrow portion, which is stream, S-T-R-E-A-M. And then there's grass on the other side of the stream. So grass three, And then we'll do wall. I'll put a W for the wall. <clears throat> and those are like parts of the picture that will show up on the right side and the left side. So, so each one of those zones, one, two, three, four, five, five different zones need to have a, you know, a unique addr address, address. And you need to address them uniquely. So they may have to have um, maybe the, the green that's, closest to us has a lot of activity, some big tall grass, more defined threat, you know, more defined um, blades, brighter green. Um, the next semi layer, maybe it's a change of direction. Remember we were talking about the planes of the, um, of those crystal formations. Um, so the, the grass up here will go left and right. Maybe I'll make the grass on this side, just um, like all layered flat or you know, I'll add a diagonal, maybe a couple going to the side. Then the stream, I can do like wiggles, like almost like water, like literally draw water, like water waves. And then maybe the grass on the other side will be really, really light and really, really small. Trevor? Yeah. Can you please point out in the image, I'm not seeing the wall, where you're seeing a um, wall. The very top, I'm just seeing, see how it turns blue? Okay. Um, it's, I could be, okay. I don't think it's, I, I didn't know what to, how to read a, that. It could be a rock. Um, so <laughs> it's funny because I, I try to put myself in the picture and I try to imagine this, the place that it is. And there's this um, down actually by the Whole Foods in Mount Washington, there's a stream that you have to, to go over. It always floods whenever there's a rain and you can't get into Whole Foods. And um, I'm not sure or if you, you can hear you're turning me. robotic you're turning robotic but me. you're gonna have to text me stace <laughs> is everybody else hearing stacy like this <laughs> maybe her battery is low or something <laughs> or maybe she's turning into a drone oh there she goes i bet you it was her battery it's either bad. Well, when my computer dies, I'm still in the meeting, but I will be frozen. Um, yeah, so then I don't know what happened. I told her to text me. She texted me. Probably a bad connection or something. Yeah. Um, I'm going to keep my eye out for her in case she comes back. Um, all right, so it's 520. We kinda, we're kind of at a, like a crossroads. The, the crossroads would be do we want to keep like extend you know, working on this in all of its glory um or do we want to move to another another piece um and i can honest honestly i can go both ways because i think that with my pen and ink it could be really really interesting and it's just going to and, and like all of these different kinds of textures is going to be 
it's going to take time. And if you guys are have, have if you guys have invested in it and you're enjoying it, I'm I'm happy to keep going. Hey Stace. Can you hear me, Stacy? Oh, poor Stacy, she froze again. I can hear on every third word. Same for us. Um, all right, so let me take a look at here. Let, uh, Mr. Messick, can I see your drawing? Oh, wow, that's very cool. Okay, great. Yeah, so it looks like you could spend more time on this too whether you color it or um, shade it or put it in an environment, probably put it in a rectangle, I'd imagine. Um, Julia, let's see yours. Or I'm sure you probably drew, drew, you've driven, you've drawn like seven. Yeah, I went a little fast, but I'm drawing more birds now. I'm still, I'm still with the birds, but I do this one. That's spectacular. Lovely, lovely. Um, Sebastian, where are you boss? Cool. Yeah, that looks good. Um, you and and just because I am conformed to this rectangle doesn't mean that you're conformed to the rectangle. That's uh, I, I'm just this is just like a viewing window. Um, I might, yeah, I might even like zoom in and try and get some details um, of this thing. Okay, let me check Stacy. See what Stacy's been texting me. Dun, 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 dun. Keep disconnecting. I was only hearing every third word. Same on our end. Same. Oh, you're uh, now I see you and hear you. Oh, I was just about to text you. So it's uh, happening for others as well. No. Oh. It's it, it's it, everyone else is experiencing the same relationship. Yes, that's so, yeah. that, right. Right. <laughs> Um, all right, who else? Who else wants to show? Oh, let's see it, Maya. Yeah. Oh, Maya, nice. All right, I think we should. I think we should take this because whether you decide to go to into a pen and then um, who else is in there? Um, Stella, can we see yours? Stella, is that Estelle? Hey, Estelle, do you go by Estelle? Will you just say it. I've been calling you Stella, but I, I go by Stella. Yeah. Oh yeah. Stella. Okay. Oh, Great. It's but just on it's Zoom. It automatically goes to like my school account, so it says Estelle since that's my name. Can you hold that? There you go. Hold that back just a tiny bit. There we go. I wasn't able to get the whole image unless you pull back a little, but I got it. Thank you. And then um, yeah. you dove in there with color. That was nice. It looks so good. All right, cool. So we're just going to keep doing it. I mean, honestly, it's only, it's, it's 524. So we only have like a half hour left and I have way more than a half hour um, invested. So <clears throat> those of you that are working with the color, um, you know, you'll, you know, you, it's like the, the darkest elements I think are the blues and the purples. You know, the midtones are kind of the oranges. Um, and you know then and then there's some light tan and white um the interesting thing about the bird is that nothing is green um so there's no even remotely green elements part of the design so you'd be if you if you put a background on i'm not saying you should i'm just saying if you did um the greens would would set off all these other colors and kind of you know in a unique way and if you're using mm -hmm. just if you're just using pencil with tone um, that'll be also really interesting. Um, and you wouldn't key it with color, but you'd key it with value in the sense that, you know, the whole picture is going to have, you know, once you put it inside of a rectangle and since we have a whole half an hour left, um, I would define it in a rectangle. That's probably not the rectangle of the pad of the paper. There's not the, the image is too zoomed in. I'm not saying you should zoom in as close as I am, but you can give them a little bit more space to breathe. Um, but 
um, I would I would try I would attempt it to draw a rectangle, and then on top of that, I would um, you know recognize that the whole rectangle has to receive some kind of tone um, in order for the light spots to stand out. So if you leave the background blank, then the white patch around the eye, the white feather tips, you know, in the tail and in the wings, they won't they won't be able to stand out because the paper in the background is so white. So if you, if you tone everything, then the white area is actually able to stand out as being white. If you're working on gray paper, that would be easiest because then you put in your dark marks and then you would just take white chalk pencil and add highlights, you know, that way. Mm. <clears throat> we made a huge pot of coffee this morning, Kristen and I. And I have this big mug, look at the size of this mug. It's like, this is like no joke. So I pour like half the pot of coffee into this big mug and I pour my milk into a little bit of milk into it. And as soon as I put the milk in, all these white chunks came up because the milk had gone bad. And if you put sour milk into hot coffee, it, it calls what it, it curdles. So it turns into like these chunks. So we had to pour out like almost an entire pot of coffee. And it was a little heartbreaking because it's really delicious coffee and I hate wasting money. Okay, that was a great story, Trev, thanks. Um, I'm gonna go grab a pen really quick. All right, cool, yeah, I just, I'm switching over to pens too. And I'm wondering, um, I think I'm gonna switch the orientation of the, of the screen and maybe focus and just like zoom in on the head, if that's all right. And if anybody needs me to switch it or wants to take a screenshot of it at first from this vantage point, you know, maybe do that, take a screenshot so you have it. Um, Stace, do you know what it was called if anybody wanted to search it on the internets? Uh, maybe Stacy left too. Yeah, I don't know how you would find it. I don't even know what type of duck it is. As well. All right, so my drawing isn't going to be zoomed in as much, but you'll get a better appreciation for what's going on in the head, I think. Let me lay this flatter. So, yeah, you guys are a little bit on your own right now. Like my God, it's 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 gorgeous. Hmm. I'm gonna start. And so, do, you guys don't mind if I just explain. You guys don't have to be working on the same part as me, but I'm just gonna talk. I'm just gonna talk through it, and just because if I, if I do, then usually um, good things comes out. You know, good ideas come out of it. So I can tell right now that my pencil line for the eye. I made the eye a little too big. So I'm gonna draw the inside um, shape of the eye and fill it in black. And I'm gonna let that dry for a minute. And then I think I'm gonna erase my pencil lines. So that should be, um, it should make my eye a little bit smaller. I let, I let Stacy back in, she's joining. She, I think she needs a new web service. She's in the house. Hola. We missed you, Stacy. Hey, it's so nice to be missed. It's happy. I'm so happy to be back. Did you switch, did you switch devices? No. I did not. I just logged out and back on. Mm. <clears throat> um, so with this pencil, or with this pen, I should say, 
and with the zooming in, it's almost, it's almost, it was almost good that I wasn't zoomed in before because I overly simplified what I was drawing and I didn't get caught up in any details. And here, that's like, because I've seen the whole, now I can confidently get caught up in the details. Um, I don't have to, um, I don't have to worry that if I invest, you know, 10 minutes in this one beak, I'll know that it's the right size and it's in the right place, you know, within, you know, within the proportions of my overall drawing. Whereas before, and, you know, I don't have color, so, and I, and I, my shading with a pen is, uh, is, is a little bit special. Meaning that I can't get tones with blending. Um, I can get it through for their straight lines, you know, parallel lines and some dots. Um, but that seems like it might be a mistake. It's okay. You win some, you lose some. I don't know. I'm probably going to, I'm probably going to not do a lot of tone unless it's a, a large solid object. <clears throat> Move this head out of the shadows. His little blue mohawk is really smooth. I had um, used more straight lines to kind of express the um, plane changes. And I'm going to, you know, round it out more. <clears throat> Take advantage of the, you know, the curves because curves are beautiful. can really see the texture of the, the way that the feathers um, flop down and mat down on the back of the head here. There's a lot of variations of color, which I don't have, but I can still do, you know, mid-tone, you know, light textures versus heavy textures versus no texture. And the no texture is gonna be reserved for, you know, the white raw paper. <clears throat> I'm really seeing this little, um, little, I, I'm almost imagining like a helmet. You ever seen like these helmets, like bike helmets that are like aerodynamic and they come back into a, a point in the back of the helmet. That's kind of what this little blue tip is back here. And I suspect that, you know, aerodynamics is not far off the mark since these guys fly a lot of long distances. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna do an edge. Um, actually, I'm gonna go back. Hopefully my pen has erased at, the, at this moment. So I can erase around the eye. If you, if you try to erase and the ink's not dry, it'll smudge. And that's, you just gotta be careful of it. I, I I ruined one of my drawings this morning because of the ink was still. You wet. did. I, mean, I, would, I wouldn't say ruin, ruin, but not ideal. I'm sorry to hear that. All right, so now I've got this eye here floating in isolation. I can draw a little bit of the indication of the outside of the eyelid with some dots. Maybe a little line. And then I can draw the edge of the orange. Oh. These layered spikes are so interesting. And the, it's nice with the pen and ink is that you, with the pencil, it's like kind of your first shot. But really the, the second time you go through it, it's not even guaranteed. <laughs> you have a bet, it, it increases your chances of success. 
All right. Looks nice. <clears throat> I'm going to come up and see if I can erase more of my construction lines. This is turning into something so stylized because of all the mistakes I'm making. It's really... Uh, are you taking advantage shame. of it? A shame or are you taking advantage of it? Well, I'm trying a little of both, I guess. I'm trying to take advantage of it. I'm trying to just accept that this is where it is. I'm kind of where Miss Stacy is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Where you, where you kind of like you're a little detached. Yeah. Where you're kind of, you're making it your own because, you know, it's, there's only so much you can get from the reference and then the, you know you you use the nature reference and then ultimately it's your art piece so you got to do what you got to do to make the piece you know look good i said something about that yesterday to my younger kids i was like oh i wish i had that on record and i had it, it had to do with um you know whenever there's a seemingly there's whenever there's seemingly a problem or a mistake you got i mm -hmm. think yeah you know, we're doing the the oil painting with bob ross and where you've got to look for the opportunity in the uh, you know the unsuspecting. So what 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 some people can see as a, a problem or a misstep or an accident, um, there's always an opportunity in there. So you just have to find it and you have to be creative. And part of being creative is finding a, a solution to make something work. You know when you're given certain when you're given a situation. You know, there's an opportunity to be successful within that situation, no matter what. Um, it's just you have to be of an open mind, and you have to have the mindset of this is we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna make we're gonna make something great out of this, rather than well, I wish I had this, I wish I had this, I wish I had done this. I would you know instead of having like these acknowledging the things that you don't have, you know, use what you do have and create something wonderful out of that, and that is true for an art piece but i think it's also you know true for a lot of you know life situations and you know the the, the yeah. you know the the cliche is that you know god gives you lemons then make lemonade that's the kind of i mean that's the kind of thing <clears throat> and you know i'm i'm i kind of am with you guys with that like i've got this pen it's beautiful it's a sharpie it's permanent Yet, you know, every when I'm erasing, it's it's lighting, it's lightening it, it's lighting it, lightening it, yeah, lightening it more than. So I'm like I, I might have to erase the pencil first, and, uh -huh. and then completely yeah. and completely abandon my pencil lines rather than <laughs> trying to go over my pencil lines where I have the security. Erase the pencil lines completely and like work within the limits of the parts that's erased. Yeah. My, okay, I think I'm gonna go back, go back to see the whole. I'm sure some of you are looking to work on other parts of the bird than just. Yeah. So in that spirit, I'm going to go erase the whole <laughs> from the bottom of his jaw all the way down to the crux of his neck. I think I'm going to erase all of those lines and then freehand it with pen because they're just it's just not erasing well. Once the pen is on there. Oh my gosh, it's so scary. <laughs> now it's just a floating, floating duck head. I guess that looks like it's a part that could be camouflaged.
Yeah, so Stacy, I did get confirmation from uh, from Lynn. <laughs> I feel yeah. little, I feel a little bad because she wasn't here last week. So I sent the uh, I sent the cat in the hat drawing, you know, the warm up drawing. Right. And she wrote back. She goes, um, "I think I'll sit this one out." Oh. She was not happy uh -huh. with the cat in the hat. I was like, I think I'm going to send her the video and be like, listen, that was just a warm up. And was really uh, <laughs> a great warm up. Yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> Now, my next question is, once this pen is on here, how compatible are my markers going to be? Are you using an erasable uh, marker? No, no. I'm using the, the fine tip Sharpie pen, which- That's what I'm using. Is really good, actually. You think of Sharpies as like the big permanent markers, but Before I get too much further, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I gotta see whether these colors are gonna work. Mine is looking more and more like a turkey. Well, that's not so bad. When you said, when you when you said, I thought you said, when I heard that, I thought you were gonna say turtle. I was like, oh God. <laughs> yeah, I'd so, rather so be honestly, a seeing, seeing a turtle, knowing that it looks more like a turkey is kind of a relief. Yeah, I'll go with that. That's a little too dark. Oh, yeah. Are pen and color pencils compatible? I don't even think I've ever posed that question. It's not when it's not dry. Because for our it's, class, I had to um, outline everything in pen yeah. and use color pencils too. Yeah. It did not go well. Um, okay, well, I'm gonna go. I have not yet had the chance to go out and get like some nicer colored pencils, so I'm stuck with the Crayola <laughs> brand. So until we can go out, uh, I'm stuck with Crayola, so I'm trying to like levitate away from the pencil. So the, what I recommend to your, your folks, there's a set of 150 colored pencils, a Prismacolor set. Um, I can't remember how expensive it is. It's pretty expensive, but I, I would say probably like once a month, uh, probably once a month, maybe even more than that. Michael's has a 40% a off single purchase item. So call it like $150. It's probably less than that actually, but it's still a big purchase. But 40% off of that, you wind up getting a, a lot of bang for your buck. And the color and so yeah like i said as long as you have a uh, an electric pencil sharpener <clears throat> as long as you have an electric pencil sharpener and um and that 40 percent off discount that's uh, I, I i would splurge for all of the extra colors we definitely have electric pencil sharpeners we have like the best electric pencil sharpeners in the world like you stick it in and it's like not even like half a second before it's done and it's like the sharpest thing in the world Love it. 
Um, one of the techniques I have been using with my color pencils, and I kind of forgot because I haven't used color pencils in a while, <clears throat> but I lay down a, like one color, a tone with one color, and then I come in with another color on top and then kind of blend it. It's almost like the second one is like a blending color. Uh, this is the one that uh, I was talking about with pen and color pencils. I mean, I really like that piece, but um, I don't but know. But I had like five smears on here. Yeah. Probably one up here. Um, it's in opposite directions on the screen. Uh, probably there's like three over here, one over here. Over here, oh yeah. Here, and here, because smears, 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 smears. all smears there because uh, apparently that marker takes like a day to dry. Apparently. Oh my gosh! Well, that's 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 a long time. Because I I waited like half an hour and it was still wet. Like the next day, it was fine. Um, what kind of pen was it? It was. Where is it? It's the only one of the only pens I have that is pretty thin. It's liquid Magnus. Yeah, it's probably because it's it's like like really. You know, the liquidness it probably gives it like a really gorgeous flow. Like it probably has like a. A more of a like, almost an Indian ink kind of feel, but it probably does take a lot longer to dry. Yeah, it is pretty good, but it is running out of ink now. Oh, yeah, it probably flows heavier too. This is probably the um, thinnest marker I have, and it's really thin. Mm hmm. Yeah, it's like a fine tip. Um, okay, so notice, I don't know if you noticed this, but. Um, I'm intentionally um, drawing in band, like so. I'm 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 coloring the face. I'm coloring the head, um, but I'm making sure that I'm having the, the the object up against the background. So the the way the colors should be seen is a one color in relationship to another color. And the reason that is is because the red that I used for the beak. Um, look, the red looks different up against the tan of the paper than it does against the bright green of the, you know, the grass that's on the other side of the stream. So I'm coloring the background in terms of the band. So this is grass number three, and this is my code. So my code is going to be this dark at an angle this way, and then a light green on top. That's like the code that I've developed in terms of color um, for that, for that area. Now, the next one beneath that is going to be the stream, but I'm not quite there yet because I have to finish the, I'm gonna finish the, the wall. I'm gonna use a neutral gray, a light gray of some kind and then hit it with a dark. There's the gray. And I like the, uh, I'll, I'll hit it with a softer cool. Um, I don't know what happened, but I, I think I, for, I think I was like possibly not going to do color. So I did the pen without the blue but now this blue is like so good and the blue is strong enough to to cover over my black pen which is also kind of interesting <clears throat> hey, i have a cool gray please here's a nice one it's almost violety there you go. I just don't want the color of the of the wall to compete with the bright blue of the bird. So I'm gonna, I can just nice and soft, a little bit dark, but not darker than the, the feathers of the head. Um. <clears throat> Color pencils are also interestingly interesting in that you can yeah you know, what I'm, I'm just going to draw this orange up here if i press this orange really hard it's one color but if i go lightly and i let the the paper show through 
it's almost like a watercolor technique. And I think I may have found the perfect color for the face and then for the fanned feathers of the neck. The porcupine feathers that is. Put the magenta back here. Orange up here. Soft face. Very soft face. I'm actually coloring in I'm coloring in the spikes and then I'm coloring in between the spikes. So the spikes are the light brown. And then the spikes and then the space between the spikes, I'm using kind of a, a deep magenta. This is a purple, a for real, for real purple. <clears throat> I don't know if it's a deep blue, or even I could even go black for some of these. The um, the shadows, the deep shadows on those dark blue feathers, right at the base of the neck really feels really feels dark to me light gray back here well Stacy thank you for um finding this cool photo. Oh, you're welcome. My pleasure. Ah, I, I kind of, I was doing the feathers. Did you ruin it? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> oh, no. I was doing the feathers, and I, I got lost in the feathers, and I got, like, into the neck feathers and I was so focused in the one spot that I was doing. I was just going one spot at a time. And I take a second and look back and I realize what I've done. Ah, I don't know. I don't Can know. you make it can you make it work? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how I did it. I just like looked and I did it. Yeah you were in you you got in the zone man. You were in the zone. I mean, the, the, what I would do is that right now you don't have, uh, really, you don't have to, um, and no one that sees your bird is going to look at the photo of the bird, which is like the best part. So just make the, you know, make your bird distinct, you know, not, it's not like it's a science illustration. So it's not like you have to copy. It's not like this goes in a, like a, a science journal. And if it's wrong, someone's going to misidentify it. Um, I don't know. I just say take take pleasure in the the fact that that happened. Um, it's nice being in the zone, even if it takes you. I had a I had a I had a coach who um, we, we were we were like in middle school and we were like had a really bad football team, and this coach just couldn't figure out how to get the team like back on track, and so he would think about his coaching techniques driving to and from ocean city every weekend. And he said he, one time he said he was thinking so hard about how to you know, fix the team that he like went the wrong way home. 
And this is like a path, and this is like a path that he'd been um, driving his entire life. Like every- Oh my weekend, goodness. Every weekend, all summer for his entire life, he'd been driving this one path. <laughs> and he was like, I was thinking so hard that I just went completely in the wrong direction. And I was like, oh man, you must, our team must be really hopeless. <laughs> um, but anyway. How long, how long do you think it got, took him to get back home? I mean, I think he, he th and that's, that's the other thing. He was like, it wasn't like I just missed the turn. He's like, I wound up in Pennsylvania. He like went like a whole like, like half hour, like a half hour out of the way because he was like focusing so hard. Right. Oh, wow. <clears throat> oh, and I changed, um, I used the pen. Hold on, let me, um, I'm going to stop the share for a second so I can see, so I can see close up. Oh, stop share. I'm going to pin, oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh. Maya, that's gorgeous. Hold on, I got to pin it so I can see it. It's, 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 it's very nice. Yeah, look at all the different, I mean, you had, you have like a code for each one of types of feathers. I mean, you know, it's just that little, like, even if it's like simplified like that, there's no color. It doesn't even need it. All right, I'm gonna go back to the screen share. And you could put that in a photocopier, Maya, and then print out like, you know, six copies and you could paint it um, or color it, you know, six different ways. You know, it really becomes its own coloring book. Well, that would be very easy to do. Do you have a copy machine in your space? Mm, um, no. Well, but if whatever. I took a picture of it and then I have a printer right behind me. Right. Um, what I would do is I would take, I would take, don't print it on like printer paper, take a, um, get good drawing paper and cut it to the right size and then print it on that. Okay. You're, you're hooked up. <clears throat> I have one too over my shoulder, but I don't know how to use it, but I have a full-time tech support. So. Yeah, and classic color pencils, you get you get one, you get two chances and maybe a maybe a third, a third run to adjust it. Oh, that's beautiful. What blue is this? I get, another, I get like a sky blue, not a sky blue, but a river blue. Oh, yeah. Now I have to, um, I can keep forgetting to erase. My, I don't keep forgetting, but I almost forget to erase my graphite. I mean, square that just, sometimes, yeah, the land, sometimes the landscape is like my favorite thing so it's like you have to finish you just you have to fin you have to at least attempt to finish the sketch so that you can then go into the background i was really excited about how i described the nature of the background in those four separate parts There's the stream. Oh, maybe I'll make the stream a little bit bigger because I, I really like the color. It'll help me transition from the neck into the body. Yes. The light blue on top of that. The one's like a foundation layer. And then the second layer will be almost like a blending layer. That's my code. So I got a light blue and then a dark blue. That's my blending code. With the blue a little bit. Yes, dude. 
I can make the wall it doesn't look much like a wall. So I could pull this up and actually draw like rock, like you know how like you can you can I can make almost like stone the bottoms of like stone. One thing. Mm-hmm. Uh like a few weeks ago I said I drew a guinea pig. I think this is basically what it looked like. What? You made that? Well, I didn't make this one. It's just the picture I copied, I think. Yeah. I think guinea pigs are so cute. Oh. I am violently allergic to them. Like, I'll, I'll start sneezing before I even know there's a guinea pig in the house. I will. Um, but they're right so cute. Back. Okay. I think I think it's almost six, though. Six oh two. I was like, I was like, we're gonna have too much time. And now I only got through, I got through less than half of my duck. I like this. The um, there's something about the um, having silhouette lines that I couldn't achieve in the pen, but the color pencil it seems to be more compatible. So. I'm kind of abandoning the I might I might abandon the pen and switch over, but who knows? This piece was not easy. Look at the look at my look at my my fan. It's like I look at the fan and I'm like, that's so gorgeous. I want to draw it. And then I look at mine and I'm like, oh gosh, that's I didn't have the combo. Oh yeah, my that is that is a loving guinea pig if I've ever seen one. Um, all right. Yeah, we got to go. Um, can I see what, can I see the final pieces? Um, fashion and, oh, yes. I'm staying mostly the same. It did. Oh, it did. Hold what, on, what, Sebastian. What else, you, what else were you working on? I see that too. Freeze that for me, Sebastian. You probably can't see it. I'm doing it digitally. I'm drawing a crow Thank for my you. brother because it's his favorite bird. Thanks, Sebastian. Um, Sebastian, you put it back up again. I'm pinning you so I can <laughs> see it. Oh yeah, you got further than I did. That would actually look nice in an oval, like an oval frame. That would be kind of cool. <clears throat> um, all right, ladies and gentlemen, I think I've seen everybody's pieces. There's no mysteries. Um, oh, I think we'll try to draw that tree next week. Oh, those are great. That's a great page. <laughs> Oh, Maya, let's see that again. Estelle, Please. are you freaking kidding me? Hold on, let me pin. Let me pin these people. Remove pin. And then. Thank you. Estelle. And Estelle, I didn't get yours. Where are you, Estelle? What are, are you using? Oil or... What are you oh. using? Yeah. Hold that yeah, again. Hold it a little wow. for from you from the screen very, yeah, yeah 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 very compatible very thank you that looks great and uh mr twist yes stace may yes. we see yours again oh you want the photo yes screen share iphone cable, iPhone cable. oh darn what? Now I don't see. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> What's up there? I just had to re, had to reestablish the share. <clears throat> Trevor? This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. What's up there? Did you have a question? Do I? Yeah. Are we still in the house? I don't know what you're talking about. Is I class or, or is everyone still here? Yeah, everyone's still here. Okay. I'm gonna, I can't I'm gonna, see. I'm gonna sign <laughs> off. I'm gonna sign off. I gotta start cooking some lobster. We're having lob. We're having yeah. service. So I kind of. Bye, everybody. Have a great week.
I kind of didn't want to show uh, my bird, so I like drew something really quick to kind of make up for it. <laughs> Let's do it. Oh, yeah. I've been Will working on trying to get my eye nose proportions correct. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've been experimenting a little bit. So you just drew that right now? Yeah. So yeah, you've been practicing. That's great. Um, I don't think I could have any corrections on that. Um, I'm trying to think. I would, mm -hmm. I would, um, I would just make your make your brothers like hold still and like draw from a model. You know what I mean? Be like, hold. I mean, if you just drew that there in like five ten minutes, you can make your brothers hold still and draw them. And your parents will probably do it too. So it's like once you, in order to get your proportions right, you have to have an example, a target to shoot at. You know what I mean? If you can like practice your archery and you're just shooting into the woods randomly, it's like, yeah, you're, it might be interesting shot, but you it like find like find a specific target and then practice on that. And I think you can set up mirrors for yourself too. You know, where you like angle a mirror so you can see yourself in profile. Um, you know, you're always your own best model because you, you'll hold still as long as you, <laughs> yeah, you, you, you always are, you're never in need of a model because as long as you have a mirror. Um, all right. Great work, everybody. That was fun. Thank will, you so much, Mr. Twist. Thank um, you. Everybody have a great week. Hey, you're welcome. Bye. Everybody. Thank you. Bye. Wrong. Wait, did the dog just say goodbye to me? Yes, he was saying goodbye. Oh, Aww. So lovely. Well, tell him I said goodbye. <laughs> woof, woof. If my dogs were in the room right here, but they're not allowed to, because they're not even allowed upstairs, and there's a lot of stuff in here, and you'll, my, one of my dogs will eat everything mm -hmm. in here. But would they say goodbye? Uh, would they, they would definitely goodbye? start barking like crazy if they heard. <laughs> that dog bark? Yeah. But would they say goodbye on cue, like Mr. Messick's dog? Oh, he's just trying to get out. <laughs> All right, everybody. I'll see you next week. Peace.